So one of the things I like to do with SketchUp is try to replicate reality with my models. And so sometimes when you're working in SketchUp, things are just a little bit too perfect, where the real world kind of isn't. Well, in today's video, we're going to talk about two different extensions that we can use in order to add some randomization and a little bit of chaos to our models to make them look, look more realistic like the real world. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. Let's start by saying that we've got a series of like, uh, these are six by sixes and they're stacked on top of each other like this. And this is actually from an email of a picture somebody sent me um, and it's actually a pretty cool condition. So first off, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a grid like this. Well, in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to extrude all of these faces. And to do this, we're gonna use the extension joint push pull. Remember, the joint push pull allows you to extrude multiple faces at one time. So I'm just going to extrude this to a depth of negative 10, or let's go with 12 feet and hit the enter key. And so what that's done is that's just taken all of these faces and extruded them like we've stacked a bunch of these on top of each other. So what we want to do in this situation though is we want these to be with some of these pieces in and out, right? We don't want them to be 100% flat and uniform. Well, there's actually a function inside of joint push pull from Fredo 6 under the normal push pull option to randomize surfaces. So yours might look a little bit like this when you open it up, which is actually hiding some of the cooler features. So in this case, we wanna click on the more options right here. Um, I'm gonna go with no on the plane. But what we wanna focus on is we wanna focus on this option over here for random. And so what random is gonna do is it's gonna let us set a distance um, at which something is going to be push pulled. So if we turn on random push pull, like this, notice what this is gonna do is this is going to allow us to set randomization in here just like this. And so the offset distance is going to make a difference too. So we're going to set this to something like six inches like this. Notice how that's going to actually push pull these faces um, based on this factor right here randomly based on our offset. So another way we could do that is when we first access this before we actually run it or change any of these things, we can set our randomization factor and then we can just click and move our mouse like this and notice how that's going to randomly extrude those in or out based on that location. So if you wanted something to be just kind of like minor like this, you could do it this way, but this is a really easy way to randomize those surfaces. So quick side note, notice how right now, let's say we had a bigger surface. Notice how this is extruding things up and down like this. Well, if you set your random to zero so that the randomization is only up and down like this, then it's just going to randomize surfaces in the upward direction or the extrusion direction. So this is actually really interesting because let's say we had a scaling factor of like 10 and we were to click in here and do this. Notice how we can use this in order to randomize things like cities as well. So you could create like random ups and downs like this. Another cool thing you could do is if you wanted to only select some of these squares, so something like this, so that you could leave some of it flat. And then run this that would allow you to add randomization only in those areas. So um, you can have a lot of fun with this. The other thing I wanted to talk about though is right now, this is just raw faces, right? Um, so it's not actually like the, the actual boards as individual object, it's just faces that are being created in here. So you're limited if you wanted to try to do this maybe on like the side, for example. So if I was to go into my side view and try to do the same thing, what it's gonna do, and I'm gonna set this back to two and a half, and negative one, we'll go back, we'll run this just a little bit. So let's say we wanted to randomize this to the side. Well, you're gonna run into issues with this because now you're gonna get these like weird little overlap edges, right? Um, because you can't really do both of these at once. I mean, I guess you might be able to, but um, it, it's just a little bit limiting when you're doing the raw faces. 
Well, there's another extension that you can download for free in the Sketchication extension warehouse called Chaos. And so I'll link to Chaos in the notes below this video. It's in the Sketchication extension warehouse. Note that it hasn't been updated since 2020, but it still seems to be working in 2022. And it's specifically for randomization of objects. So let's say that we were to um, have a bunch of stacked, we'll call them two by sixes, 12 feet long, something like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this a group and I'm gonna create a stack just using the simple array functionality in SketchUp. But in this case, I don't wanna push pull the faces. I actually wanna move the individual objects around. Well, what Chaos does is it actually allows you to select objects and then I'm gonna activate Chaos. It's gonna give you these settings in here where you can actually move things on an axis. It also gives you the ability to randomize scale and rotation, which for this particular application we don't want. In this case, we just wanna randomly move these on the X and Y axes. We don't want them to go up and down because they're gonna be stacked on top of each other. If you move them up and down, it's gonna look a little bit weird. So we're just gonna select the X and Y right here. And let's say that we want these to just have a little bit of jitter or offset. So let's say that we wanted these to have a minimum movement of zero and a maximum of two. Well, if I click on OK, what that's going to do is that's going to randomly move these on the X and Y axes in both of those directions with a factor of two or two inches, meaning it's randomly going to move these in this direction and this direction by two inches. So one thing to be aware of with this is this is not doing any kind of collision detection. So notice how I've got like overlap of boards. So this is probably not something you're going to want to do if you're gonna have like high levels of detail in here like this. However, if this is something that's gonna sit in the background, if it's gonna be part of a context model in like a lumber yard or something like that, um, really anything where you just need that randomization so things don't look super uniform, this could be a great tool for doing that. If you wanna learn any more about these extensions, I'm gonna to link to detailed tutorials about chaos and joint push-pull on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.